There he is, right there, gotcha. Okay. Council will call the meeting to order at uh, <clears throat> seven o'clock. And uh, Jill, are we live now? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, welcome council, uh, staff as well, and uh, any of the listening uh, public, uh, welcome to uh, the virtual meeting of Southwest Middlesex, Wednesday, April 22nd. We will uh, call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Today's meeting is being held as a virtual meeting due to the declared emergency. In order to keep everyone safe, we're taking this measure to help stop the spread of COVID-19. And uh, uh, as we uh, continue, although this is a virtual meeting, we will attempt to record, stream live, and publish in accordance with Council's electronic uh, recording of meeting policy. And due to the pandemic and the requirement for social distancing to keep you safe, we are not allowed public access to attend this meeting. Normally, by attending an open meeting of the municipality of Southwest Middlesex, you are consenting to your image, voice, or comments being recorded. Anyone who is invited to speak may be recorded and their voices and images and comments will form part of the live stream. Council item number two in the agenda is a disclosure of pecuniary interest. Has any member of council declaring a pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof? Jill, have any documents been received? No, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Then we will move on to uh, additions uh, to the agenda. Uh, there's a, a couple of things. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wilkins has a notice of motion uh, regarding the voting procedures. I would like to move that up to number four in the agenda. And the reason being, should that uh, motion pass, uh, we may be able to take advantage of it uh, through much of the duration of this meeting and it may expedite things. And secondly, uh, I would like to add, uh, uh, Chief Hansen, if uh, you would be kind enough to favor uh, council with a verbal report uh, under the uh, administration uh, uh, reports there, I see fire is down for none, but if I could slide you in there, I know you've been working very hard the last few days and uh, we would uh, like to hear how the progress has been made on that community hotline. The uh, consent agenda uh, is, uh, there are no delegations uh, and uh, uh, petitions. Uh, the consent agenda is before us. Uh, what I'll do, I will read the principal titles. And uh, if there is any um, uh, items in the consent agenda that you wish uh, move to new business, we can do so. Uh, another item I would like to uh, uh, mention is, uh, though Kristen has the amounts of the vouchers, she does not have the particular invoices pertaining to those amounts. So if there is any questions, uh, Kristen uh, will certainly get back in a timely manner to each counselor, and uh, she will be able to break down the uh, amount of those invoices. Vouchers totaling $294,586. Mayor Mayhew, yes. Mayor, mm -hmm. can I just interrupt? Yeah. Um, and if we can get the motion for the uh, acceptance of the agenda with those changes. By all means, yes. Yeah. Okay, we, so if, we uh, have a <coughs> mover and a seconder would be great. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll yes. move it. Yep, got I'll Councilor second. Scott. I'll, I'll second. 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 But I do Crump, have. Uh, Councilor Crothers. Uh, <laughs> has uh, been moved by Councillor Cowell, seconded by Councillor Crothers. Jill, uh, could you record the vote, please? And that's with the, um, the change for uh, moving up the request related to a notice of motion to adjust the procedure bylaw for the electronic participation um, put forward by the Deputy Mayor. So moving that before um, the consent agenda, is that correct? Yes, that'll be fine. Uh, item number four, yeah. Okay. And the you. other addition would be a verbal report by Chief Hansen. Okay. We do have him. We do have him listed for giving a verbal report under okay. Section five point eight. Okay. Got it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so then I will start with a recorded vote on this one, if that's okay with you, Mayor. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, Mayor Mayhew. Yes. Uh, Councillor McGill. Yes. 
Councillor Carruthers? Yes. Councillor Cowell? Yes. Councillor Vink? Yes. Councillor Bartlett? Yes. Councillor Schuldeis? Uh, yes. And Deputy Mayor Wilkins? She's on mute. She disappeared. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so the motion carries, and then it would be right into the motion that the deputy mayor has made. It, you would just need a seconder. Uh, yes, that would be a number seven council on your agenda. The second part uh, that the procedure bylaw be further amended to allow for votes by show of hands during meetings, meetings where there is no electronic precipitation. Yeah, as long as everyone is uh, visible to all participants. And uh, it has been moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Wilkins. Is there a seconder for that motion? Calling again, is there a seconder for that motion? Thank I'll you, second. Councillor Cowell. Yeah, Councillor Cowell, I'll beat you to it there, uh, Councillor Bartlett. <laughs> uh, Jill, it has been moved uh, and seconded. Right. Accordingly, I'll ask you to, uh, are there, is there any discussion, Council? Well, I'd yes, like to be able to. I'd like to be able to see all the uh, counselors at the same time. I'm not sure how to do that on my screen. Yeah. Uh, Mark, on the top right hand of your screen, there's a little thing that looks like an ice cube tray. Just click that. Top right and, hand. Uh, yeah, and uh, I have to. I uh, noticed a, a question of, from Councillor Vink here, and uh, followed by Councillor Bartlett. Councillor Vink, go ahead. Ask your question. Uh, that was going to be my question too, because I can only get nine people on the screen, and that includes everybody. So I can't see everybody on council meter. Uh, what were you referring to on the right-hand corner? Uh, I believe uh, there's a, uh, an icon on the top right hand of your screen that looks like a uh, ice cube tray, for lack of better words. If you click that, it should give you uh, small panes of every participant in the meeting. I'm not seeing that. I don't it's have on the left idea. side on the iPad on mine, and it, yeah. you tap well, it on the left. Mine's Apple. Apple. Mine's Apple. It might not be or, or look Okay, yeah. It's a... Did you find it, Mike? Yeah, I just got it now. Thanks, Ian. Okay. No, I'm not finding it. Uh, it's Ian, a grid. Both, it's a uh, grid. Tap the corner on the left Little top side grid. on the iPad. The left one. Okay. Left hand top corner. Left top, and it'll pop up. Just says leave meeting up there. No, nope, yeah, don't hit yeah. that. No, don't hit that. Same thing happened to me. No, I don't I, want to hit that. There's a should be two icons there. underneath leave meeting. Okay. Oh, okay. How about we? Um, the one that looks like a grid. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I've got. I'm going to ask one more time. In discussion regarding the motion, is there any? Uh, same thing. I've I've lost everything, Mayor Allen. Okay. Um, no, I can't get back in on the meeting. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have to, you may have to go back to your link and start over again, Martin. Yeah, the uh, joys of technical uh, meetings, eh? Virtual yes. meetings. And what do we do if somebody loses their internet? Then we won't be able to see them. Yeah, we discussed that with Kristen. Yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> We'll have to go by phone. Mayor Mayhew. Yes, so go if, ahead. If that's the case, then we would just revert back to recorded votes. Okay. Just a minute here. I'll be right back. Okay. We'll wait Mark's return and then we'll call the call the vote. And thank you, Deputy Mayor, for making that motion. Mary Gay has a comment. Yes, go ahead. Mary, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilkins, go ahead. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, you need to make a phone. Martin, Martin's gone right now, so. So, Jill, can you see everyone at the meeting on your screen? Or do you have well, to slide it? Um, I can see everybody. Yep. Um, but it does look like Councillor Vink just dropped off the meeting. 
I understand that. Can the mayor see everyone or does he yes, have to I, slide I it as well? No, I you see can see. As well. Okay. Yeah, so when, when the vote's called, um, you're going to ask uh, all those in favor. And if they aren't all in favor, then you're going to ask those that aren't in favor of the vote, correct? As you normally would during a meeting? Yes, uh, yeah. that uh, favor and not in favor, and uh, exactly. I'll make sure that uh, I'll. Uh, yeah, I know there's some other protocols out there, but I, I. Uh, okay. Feel more comfortable and, with that one. Okay, yeah. I would. Uh, I'm going to uh, just send Martin this link, uh, quickly, and uh, and uh, hopefully he okay. can get back. So, uh, I'm going to have to unlock the meeting again um okay. to let him back in so I, I just sent martin the link and uh, hopefully he can join us uh council uh um i will have uh uh our cao uh, call the vote okay so we have um mayor mayhew yes uh councillor mcgill um no because i can't see everybody at once Okay, Councillor Carruthers? No, for the same reason. Councillor Cowell? <clears throat> and, yes. Yep. Um, and Councillor Vink is not yet in the meeting, so he is absent for the vote. Councillor Bartlett? Yes. Councillor Schuldice? Uh, yes. And Deputy Mayor, welcome. Yes. Yes. The motion carries. Okay. Thank you. And uh, being there's no uh, deputations, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, we'll move on from number four. Uh, we're on number five. Uh, the the uh, voters uh, are first, and I indicated that uh, Kristen has the amounts, but she does not have the invoices in her possession uh, uh, to answer specific questions of the breakdown. So uh, we have been assured that she will address those uh, on any questions. Um, vouchers, uh, uh, I'll leave that. Uh, second is a Southwest Middlesex Council meetings of April 8th. Five three is uh, operations of seasonal trailer parks and recreational campgrounds. Five four is Minister Clark for Municipal Affairs, Emergency Management and Civil Protection. Five, uh, five, four, five, five is conservation updates, uh, St. Clair Region uh, Conservation Authority. Five, six is sale of public property. Five, seven is a report from facilities and recreation department. And five, eight is uh, emergency management verbal update. Council, uh, um, are there any questions regarding the uh, consent agenda? Yes, Councilor Cal. I move that we um, do the thing that we do for the consent agenda. I move the we file that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. It's been moved by Councilor Cal that the uh, consent agenda be adopted. Is there a seconder for that motion? All thank second. You very much. Councilor Bartlett, I see your hand. Uh, uh, Council, are there any questions? Yes, uh, Councillor Ian Crothers. <clears throat> yes, in Steve's report, uh, there was mention of the Pexabias shields in the office uh, when uh, whatever time that's deemed it could be opened. Um, I guess my question is, will I just be a simple shield like we're seeing in the banks and various the stores and that? Because the original uh, shield or wall was uh, tens of thousands of dollars. So I'm hoping we're not getting in like that. It's just mm -hmm. it'll be a very basic, the same as we're seeing in a lot of stores and facilities now. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Crothers, uh, I believe uh, that that was revisited and uh, uh, I will hand the conversation over to Steve, but uh, that was modified substantially to a much more affordable base. And uh, I will let uh, uh, Mr. McDonald, uh, uh, expand on that. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Mayhew, uh, to Councillor Carruthers. 
Uh, at this point, just getting, uh, collecting options and ideas, there are definitely some cheaper options out there for plexiglass and now it's being widely used. So it's not as unique of an inquiry for me to be making to different suppliers. I've gotten um, a line on a couple of suppliers that other municipalities are using for the same purpose. So it is going to be cost effective. Um, we had money in the budget to take care of a door and plexiglass just over to the lower counter at the front reception. So that's a separate item, uh, but this is now more, we need to get something, a barrier for a portion of the airspace between um, visitors and our main person at the uh, customers or the front desk, just to uh, stop any airborne particles there. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, last call, yes, uh, is it your hand up there, uh, Councillor Vink? Yep. Councillor Vink, you're, you'll have to unmute yourself. Thank you. I am uh, on mute. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I just joined in again because uh, when I was trying to find that icon, uh, I got out and tried to get back in several times. So I don't even know where we are. Uh, we haven't progressed too uh, further. Uh, we, are, we are voting with a show of hands rather than a recorded ballot. And that's really all you missed. And uh, we're just asking questions, uh, questions on the, uh, the motion has been made to accept uh, the consent agenda. And uh, I, I have a last call for questions. Uh, I, well, yes, I want to uh, open up the vouchers, or I yes. want to take the vote out of consent agenda. Um, yes, you can uh, take the vouchers out. I just reminded all council while you were away from us, uh, Councillor Vink, that uh, Krista can uh, identify uh, the cost. She has the total invoices for each invoice that the municipality is responsible for. She does not have the actual invoice to break it down. Uh, so any questions you will address to Kristen and she will return the uh, response uh, at a later date when she can have the uh, material in front of her. But uh, go ahead and ask your questions and uh, the chair will allow you to direct them to uh, Kristen. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, this is in regards to 000712 independent resolutions, $4,711.50. And we received an email earlier this week in regards to this, but my opinion, the public has the right to know how this $4,711.50 was spent and, and how many cases are involved. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Vink, that information will be uh, provided to you, and uh, um, it. The public, uh, the public has the right to know as well, uh, Mayor. Yes, the, the public will uh, have the right to know that. By all means, uh, this is an open meeting, and uh, Kristen, uh, unless you have good recall, uh, I'll hand the conversation over to you. Uh, if you feel comfortable uh, of that you can uh, determine the source of the um, uh, invoice completely, uh, we can, you can do it verbally, or if you feel more comfortable, we can provide uh, Mr. Vink with an invoice and you can report back publicly later, but I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. Unless, um, unless Jill has the, the breakdown off the top of her head, I'll, I'll have to get back to you. Okay, and uh, Jill, uh, I'm quite comfortable if you can identify the, th the three uh, uh, clients that were worked on, uh, I can uh, accept that, uh, would be fine. Uh, again, if you feel uh, that the information is not uh, accurate, uh, by all means, we can uh, do it at another meeting. Uh, I'll let you determine uh, if you uh, can recall uh, the, the accounts in question. So, oh, certainly, Mayor Mayhew. So, um all of council was sent an email. So I think everyone on council. So I, I expect that what Councillor Vink is referring to is that um, he would just like to make it public what I put in my email. Is that correct? That is correct, Jill. Okay. So I don't have the email in front of me, but um, there were three different investigations and inquiries by independent resolution, one related to a municipal ombudsman inquiry and two related to the role of integrity commissioner. 
and I, I don't have the breakdown in front of me, but we can get back to you on that. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jill. Uh, I see hands up on two counselors. Uh, Councillor Cal, I saw your hand up first and followed by Councillor McGill. Go ahead, Councillor Cal. Um, I do have the email up in front of me and it said that the ombudsman investigation, I believe was $900. The one investigation um, it listed of a code of conduct was 1725 and another investigation was 1425. Okay, Martin, you have that information? And my yeah. question is, we can, we as individuals can make that public, is that my understanding then? Based on what was in the email and only that information. Yes, uh, that is correct. This is an open meeting. It's not a, it's a, it's just a voucher like any other. Um, I missed a hand here. Uh, Mark, was it you? Thank you for your patience there. Councillor. Yeah, I, I just think that, you know, some um, rate payers in Southwest Middlesex would find that kind of a shocking amount. And uh, yeah, the one the, 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 the biggest expense, the $1,725 one plus mileage. Um, in that case, the counselor was, was cleared of any wrongdoing. And in the $1,425 one, I believe we're gonna deal with that at another meeting. The next meeting, yes, that's correct. And that will be public. Okay, uh, Councillor Vink, that's about the best we can do, I think. Uh, Kristen, you don't have any more to add to that? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, we will uh, um, continue on. Uh, um, call the vote. That we'll call the vote. We have a mover and a seconder that the yeah. consent agenda be accepted. Uh, if I can just interrupt. Yes, go ahead. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, so this, there was an opportunity just in here for a quick verbal update from the fire chief. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. By all means. And chief Hanson, uh, thank you very much, Jill, for that. Uh, chief Hanson has been firing emails out uh, quite rapidly over the last 48 hours and chief, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, if you can give uh, council a brief update as to what's going on, I'd appreciate it. So, so over the last three weeks, two or three weeks, we've been we've been um, trying to um, come up with um, a, a way to involve community people in 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 dealing with with the COVID and and, and helping us to deal with the COVID. Um, uh, everybody, I think, the counselors and 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 staff are receiving many, many, many calls every day that are unrelated to um, services at the municipality. Um, uh, provides um, we're answering them and, and, and taking care of it but there's a much a much uh, better way of doing that uh, so what we've been doing is we've been we've been gathering resource lists we've got resource lists pretty well of every service uh, commercial non-commercial um, uh, service clubs uh, in, in the community uh, right now we're, we're um, organizing those in, in a very um, organized manner so that, uh, you know, you, you can say, okay, medical, this, you know, this is a section and these are the people you can call and these are the services that are available uh, through medical. Um, uh, we, right now, the, uh, the call line is, is, has been set up. We have a number, it's set up, it's working, um, as well as uh, uh, the, the uh, number that you use to take the messages off. The overall, um, uh, look of this is going to be, uh, we're, we're going to have um, uh, this line that's unstaffed. However, twice twice a day, we're looking for volunteers to come and, and be call takers. Uh, uh, we're calling them input people to to take these these, these calls off. Um, uh, and as you know from the counselors, I've, I've put a letter out to the counselors at the beginning to, to ask if there's any, um, to give the first opportunity to uh, uh, be the call taker, simply because uh, a couple of reasons I realize the counselors are, are getting a lot of phone calls regarding this. And, and uh, secondly, um, even though this, this you know, I'm, I'm involved in organizing this, this is a community group. Uh, this isn't another committee of, of, of council or of the municipality. This is going to be a community group. Um, and, and as much 
just trying to find volunteers and so on and so forth. So what I would like to do is, is keep it internal for the first little while just to see if there's any, if there's any um, bugs that need to be ironed out, you know, amongst, amongst that before we put it out to uh, get community volunteers to, to take these, these calls up. Um, um, this, this, this we expect is going to carry on for a long time. Um, you know, we're expecting, you know, like I'm, I'm putting this up with every expectation to, for it to carry on at least until the end of this year. Um, uh, call takers, I don't know I put out that the, um, the quest for, for volunteers, but call takers will also have a script. They'll have this resource data that they can refer to. Um, and they'll also have some training. Um, before before we, we get everything up and active. Um, this is also part of a, of a, a mail out that's going out uh, very shortly. Uh, we, uh, Jill and, um, and I talked about this today. Um, uh, we're sending out some of this community information um, actually through a, a consortium of, of the ministries in, in the area and uh, which have been our first people that have stepped up to the plate to, to, um, to, to be part of this with us. Um, once we get this call line in, in, in place and working, um, I would certainly like to, to form a steering committee for, for this, uh, this community group uh, that, that includes um, uh, more organizations, um, um, five people, but, but are in, in this group, five to seven, but that includes organizations such as, uh, you know, perhaps Alliance or, or, you know, those type of community that that we can that we can utilize to to maintain this and carry it on through the through the uh, the ensuing months so that's about that's about uh, the uh, the long and short of it um i'm i'm, I'm hoping that um uh, you know once this is all over um we'll we'll have developed a, a, an organization to help our citizens through grassroots organizations and and uh, this this may continue it, it, it certainly would help you know, any municipality to, to get input from, from grassroots organizations. Thank you very much, Chief, for that uh, report. Uh, uh, I've had the pleasure of forwarding some contacts to you and uh, you're, mm -hmm. I think the mayor has already uh, uh, communicated with the chief that he's quite willing to participate in that. So uh, we look forward to others uh, putting their name forth and uh, uh, under the chief's direction, uh, uh, being apprenticed into this, uh, this new uh, service. Thank you. Through, you, through your worship, um, uh, we also have the deputy mayor who uh, who's also volunteered to take calls. Good. Great, that's great. Council, uh, any questions? And you can direct them uh, directly to the chief. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Cal. Um, I had the opportunity to be included in the call this morning. I don't know if they were just branching out or or whatnot, but as the chief mentioned, they were trying to get council involved, um, and I have had the opportunity to um, work phones in past my life, but I don't think that's what they got me in there for. Anyways, one of the things we were also trying to do is to be able to document some of this information so we have analytics on the other side of this. Um, so forms have been created uh, and can be tweaked and it's not necessarily to collect confidential information or anything like that, but it's so that we can track what type of services were recommended and what type of services were actually needed. Um, and the idea is that it's a tool to help the volunteers as well. So so that they, as Steve, uh, not, sorry, Steve, as uh, Bob had mentioned, they have resources, the volunteers will have resources to direct the individuals. Um, but it was, it was a really valuable group in the sense that this group of people, I, I had someone reach out to me and say, you know, I'm concerned about the bag tags. I'm not sure they are going out to the greater community. And one of the dialogues that happened today was the fact that the different um, players in this group knew of individuals who would need this help but at the same time they communicated amongst themselves to say if anybody knows of anybody who needs anything just mm -hmm. let me know I've got them so I think that was our goal last week her last meeting was to say you know we don't want this to go into one spot and I think that's the hope of this um, community in they called it intake but it's it's really the community support 
um, committee. And the idea behind it is, is saying, what resources do you need? We have a lot of ministerial services in our community, but it, it's taking it beyond that and saying this is all aspects of the community. So that was just a little bit from the meeting today. I know Bob um, wasn't able to stay for all of it and Steve had to leave early. So I just wanted to add that piece to it. Thank you very much, Councillor Call. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, yes, I see your hand up, Chief Hansen. Go ahead. Yeah, th through you, Your Worship. Um, uh, so far, we've, you know, in, in as much as Reverend Burns um, and our critical incident stress team has has uh, ha have stepped up to to um, uh, volunteer. Uh, for anything that this committee needs, um, Reverend Burns has has set up that that uh, um, group of of ministerial people. So that's our first step, and um, already uh, we can see that it's that uh, this collaboration between us is paying off. It's paying dividends. Good. Thank you again, Chief. Uh, we have uh, taken uh, two items out of the uh, consent agenda. Uh, Jill, we. Uh, Still have to vote on this, I believe. We have a mover and a seconder. Uh, we are under uh, a show of hands. Uh, all in favor that the balance of the consent agenda be uh, uh, carried. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wilkins, are you moving that? Thank you. Councillor Cal, you're seconding that? Uh, we had a mover and a seconder for that. Okay, all right, great, okay. Then all in, I'll call the, the question, all in favor? One, two, three, four, five. All opposed? Carried. Council item number six on the agenda, we're into staff reports. Uh, fire, uh, none. Administration, uh, Jill uh, and uh, Stephanie, I'll include your name in here as well. Uh, we have a removal of the holding symbol H2 on uh, uh, development in Wardsville. Uh, Jill, I'll hand the uh, conversation over to you. And you certainly have the option to bring Stephanie into this. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I will write off the back because it's Stephanie that prepared the report. So I'll turn it over to Stephanie. Thanks. Thanks. So as Council will recall, there was a rezoning application on the subject lands um, that rezoned the property to the residential third density. And that was in order to facilitate the construction of four townhouse dwellings. Um, and that was granted by council on May 29th, 2019. And at the time that we did the rezoning, we also placed a holding provision on the property. And that was order to, in order to prevent uh, the development of the townhouses prior to going through the site plan control process. And the applicant has um, provided us notice and we are aware that the site plan process has now been finalized and the agreement has been signed and registered on title. And so we are now in a position to lift the holding provision from the property. And so it's recommended that the holding provision be lifted. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stephanie. Uh, it's nice to see development uh, occur. Any questions from council? Councillor Vink, go ahead. You'll have to unmute yourself, Martin. You'll have to unmute yourself, please. Gotcha. Sorry, Mayor Allen. Thank you. Uh, just one uh, information on the background. Uh, that uh, former church was actually in North American Martyrs Church. I remember going there as a young boy. It wasn't St. Charles Garnier when it was in Warrensville. Yeah. Yeah, it's a piece of history. Council, uh, I'll again ask for questions. Deputy Mayor Wilkins. I uh, <clears throat> I don't have a question, Mayor Mayhew, but I will move it if no one else does either. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll second. Second that. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bartlett. Uh, I'll have a couple of calls for questions and then we'll vote on it. Uh, questions, um, uh, Councillor Crothers? You'll have to unmute yourself, Ian, please. Unmute yourself, Ian. Yeah, red microphone, hit that red microphone. Oh, we lost him. Councillor Vink, did you have a question? Unmute yourself, please, Councillor Vink. Yep, you're good. Uh, Go yes, ahead, Councillor Vink. No, I was going to second the motion, that's why I raised that's the fine. hand. 
That's good. Yep. Thank you. Go okay. ahead, Councilor Crothers. I uh, yes. Uh, it's just a question. Jill uh, attempted to answer it. I asked her the question earlier in the email. Uh, the address for the property, the legal address, is different than the address on the map. It shows Longwood Roads and I think Ontario Street. Is that a historic address that the actual legal address of that property? Uh, it's just a curious curiosity. Go ahead, uh, Jill or Stephanie can answer that. So uh, the subject land is actually located, it is Longwoods, but um, on a former assessment parcel data, it does show that the unopened road allowance um, was supposed to be King Street. And the property actually is located south of Church Street. Um, if it, Church Street were to continue across the top of the property. So I believe that's why the legal description is the way it is. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. We have a mover and a seconder for this. Uh, we've had questions uh, around council. Uh, we'll call the vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed. Motion carried. And I think Stephanie's gonna say good night before the sun gets right in her eye. I think so. Well, Stephanie, good night, everyone. Very much. Good night, uh, Stephanie. Yeah, it's nice seeing you again. <laughs> bye bye. Be safe. You Social too. distance. Continuing on the agenda, uh, we're on C building uh, reports. Uh, there are none. Finance, I'll hand it over to Kristen. Uh, Kristen, I see you have uh, three adjustments on property taxes. If you could walk us through that, uh, would you like to deal with these one by one or? I would suggest we deal with them all together, Mayor Mayhew. Okay. That's fine, I left that decision. Is that, I asked uh, Kristen, that's acceptable to you, Kristen? No problem, that's good, okay, that's Absolutely. fine. I yeah. agree with that, I think that's fine. Go ahead, Kristen, uh, take us through it. These are all uh, section 357 adjustments where the um, homeowners or property owners have applied to MPAC for an adjustment in their tax rates or amounts, um, typically based on a fire or um, demolishing a, a barn on the property or ceasing a commercial operation as within a couple of these scenarios. So MPAC does all the legwork and establishes the time of change and verifies that the change has been made and then advises us and advises us to make the um, property tax change. Okay. Thank you very much, Kristen Council. Do you have any uh, questions uh, you would like to address to Kristen? Seeing none, we will- uh... I'll, I'll move the motion. Okay, and a I'll second. Second the motion. Thank you, uh, Councilor Crothers. And uh, the three uh, uh, property tax adjustments uh, is not necessary for me to read the roll numbers there. I'll call the question. All in favor? Yes. All opposed? Seeing none, motion carried. Thank you very much, Kristen. Next on page seven of the agenda is Phyllis Facilities and Recreation Report. Uh, Stephen, uh, you're off the hook tonight. F is Public Works. Greg, you're not so lucky. We have uh, and uh, we have some uh, drainage matters uh, that uh, Andrew was involved in as well. So uh, we'll uh, hand the um, the floor over to Andrew. Andrew, if you'd like to. Uh, Introduce us uh, to these uh, requests and uh, Greg, we're glad that you're in the background. Go ahead, Andrew. You got to unmute yourself, Andrew. Yep, unmute yourself there. Where is he? Okay, uh, so the first item um, is the, oh, I lost it is the tenders for the Hagerty drains number one and two. Um, this is uh, an ongoing um, project. Uh, however, it was uh, opened um, on 
March the 4th. And I had originally intended to come to council before this, but with everything going on, here we are. Um, so the, the lowest uh, was Timmermans drainage and excavating of $112,061. That's before HST and uh, anything else. Um, and uh, I believe that I had also included in the uh, information that uh, Ray Dobbin had sent that um, he recommended that Timmermans uh, receive this job because they were the lowest and there was no issues with their um, bid either. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Andrew. It's good to hear from you. Uh, Council, this is uh, Andrew's pr uh, presentation is with regards to the Haggerty drain. Are there any questions that you would like to forward uh, to Andrew Neely? Seeing none, will someone entertain a motion to move uh, the adoption of his recommendation? Thank you very much, Councillor Lee. And seconded by Councillor Crothers. Any more discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand and leave it raised. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Andrew. One down, three more to go. Andrew, uh, the Cavalier drain. Yes. Introduce that to us. Yes, sir. Um, the Cavalier drain um, with um, a recent uh, inspection myself, there was significant standing water and I went through the files to find that it had been patched a number of times in the past through section 74 <coughs> of the act uh, maintenance. Uh, as a result, um, the, uh, the two ratepayers had signed uh, section 78 for uh, replacement and uh, I recommend that we have a scoping meeting uh, before we appoint an engineer and this way we can get a, a better idea of the extent of the damage. Uh, I do know that the ground in this area is uh, silty to mucky and it is prone to uh, finding its way into the drain. Um, so there's a very good chance that there's um, sinkholes in other parts of the drain. And I think this is a good opportunity to get that information from the people before the engineer is appointed. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Council, any questions uh, to Andrew regarding the Cavalier drain? I'll move it, Mayor Mayhew. Thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wilcox is seconder. Councillor Crothers, last call for questions. All in favor, please raise your hand and keep it suspended. All opposed? Motion is carried. Andrew, uh, two down, two to go. Robinson Drain, would you like to walk us through that, Andrew? Yes, sir. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the Robinson Drain uh, is an existing drain and uh, it is in part enclosed and in part open. The enclosed drain uh, spans, I believe it's two properties, um, not far from Newbury. And uh, it actually goes through Newbury, but uh, as an open drain. Um, and uh, the owner at the top end of the drain, um, Mr. Walsh, would like to uh, tile his property and increase the capacity of the drain and uh, I can say that uh, the current capacity of the enclosed drain uh, would not be up to current standards. Um, so that's where I would recommend again, having a scoping meeting uh, to discuss with the people in the area to get their uh, two cents on, on uh, the drain. And also hope that uh, residents from Newbury are also invited to gather what they have to say as well. Um, I'm hoping the extent of the work would just be on the enclosed drain, but we'll find out. Thank you, uh, Andrew, very much. Uh, Council, uh, questions regarding the Robinson drain. Uh, you see the recommendation. Are there any questions? Failing none, would someone move, uh, entertain a motion? Thank you, Councillor Vink, seconder. Councillor McGill. Last call for questions. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Vink, I missed your, oh, all in favor? 
Was yeah. Okay. All opposed. Motions carried. Oh, oh, sorry, Mayor Allen. I had a question. Yes, I I I thought that uh, a delayed response there, Martin. The chair is going to allow you to answer that question to uh, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, uh, um, be prepared for that. Uh, Councillor Vink has a question. Go ahead, Martin. Thank you, Mayor Allen. How would the ratepayers in Newberry be informed? Would they receive a letter? Go ahead, uh, through Andrew. you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I uh, would send a letter to the um, the Newbury office, and uh, I would give them the information that I have the the latest engineer's report. Uh, however, it is up to them to send it to the people within the watershed, as she, my apologies, as they would have the information that is most up to date as to who owns the properties. Okay. Thank you very much. That satisfy you, Councillor Vink? Yes, Mayor Allen, thanks. But thanks very much. Okay, uh, we will uh, continue on and thank you, Andrew, very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to hear from you tonight. Uh, we, we always look forward to your reports and uh, we'd like to see them adopted and progress made on drainage within the watersheds of Southwest Middlesex. We're on number seven, notice of motion. Uh, notice of motion of Martin Vink uh, that due to COVID-19 council to reduce there, there is uh, another drain. Yeah, there's one more. another drain. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, the, um, one more. Burger drain. You're right. Yeah. Uh, sorry to cut you off there, uh, Andrew. Go ahead. Eichenberger. That's okay. So the Eichenberger drain is uh, <laughs> is a little bit unique uh, in, in the fact that there is an existing drain that uh, there is a catch basin on the roadside and the drain goes through private property. There There is an existing drain uh, um, report that is uh, in the works from uh, Spreet out of London and uh, the intent is to um, capture this branch of the drain that has no legal status. Uh, it is my recommendation that uh, that it be included in the drain. It, uh, it will be reconstructed and uh, that it will be included as a part of the existing um, drainage report that Spree is working on. Can I uh, jump in quickly? Yes, go ahead, uh, Greg. Um, yeah, through you, Mary Allen. This uh, particular drain is a um, section four request this, that has been put forward by the road authority, uh, primarily because the road authority is accessing a private tile from the road system and that's what Andrew's talking about. There is no legal outlet for the road authority. And so once this project moves forward with, the, with it as a section four, then, then we will have a legal uh, outlet to a private tile or a, a municipal drain basically. Um, and we will be getting rid of our water the right way. Uh, obviously in the past, this connection was made without uh, going through this process, um, but it is only fair that if we are running our water, our road water into a private, tiling system that we uh, have a legal outlet. So those are my comments. Thank you very much, Greg. We appreciate that. Uh, the motion, the uh, Andrew uh, uh, will uh, entertain a motion to accept the petition filed under section four. Councillor Scholdice is moving that. Thank yes. you. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor Cowell up on my right hand corner. Council, any discussion uh, or questions that you would like to uh, advance to Andrew or Greg? Seeing none, I'll uh, ask for a, a show of hands. All in favor? All opposed? Noted, Martin? Carried. Andrew, thanks again. Uh, I. Uh, Knew there was four there, and I thought we had been through them. That's a it made you uh, earn your money tonight. Thank you again, and thank you, Greg. Excuse me, Mayor Al. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. Go ahead, Martin. Uh, what is I it? did not oppose that. Uh, yeah, I did not oppose that drain. Oh, I saw your hand up as. Uh, uh, drain that line. Okay. Well, okay. yes. This is the problem. With, this is the problem with doing my hands. Uh, but anyway, I did not oppose it. Okay, I'm glad you brought that to my attention, Martin. Uh, I, uh, I was watching very closely and uh, it appeared that way, but uh, I'm glad you uh, corrected that. 
notice of motion. Uh, Martin, uh, you made a notice of motion at the last meeting to uh, reduce uh, remuneration to council by 25% retroactive to April 1st uh, to July 31st. Uh, I'll let you uh, bring that uh, to the floor. Would you like to discuss that or uh, enlighten council on this? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, do I do a little speech now or do I like wait? Yes, I'm gonna, the chair is gonna give you uh, the permission to do that, Martin, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayor Allen. Most of us received an email from Rainpayer as to what we are going to do to reduce costs for the ratepayers because of the pandemic. As you know, many people in the private sector <coughs> have lost jobs and at least some of them income because of COVID-19. As representatives of Southwest Millsex, my opinion is we should lead by example. Why should private people that pay our wages be the only ones to suffer? People in government should also share in the suffering as a result of COVID-19. This is why I made my notice of motion to reduce our total wage package by 25% for four months, effective April the 1st of 2020. Thank you, Barton. Uh, Council, uh, the chair is uh, open to uh, questions to Martin on this or the, the motion. First of all, let me call for a seconder on this motion. I'll call for a seconder. If we uh, obtain a seconder on this, uh, we uh, will be in the opportunity to discuss it. Is there a seconder for Martin's motion? I'll call the question again. Is there a seconder for Martin's motion? Not receiving a seconder, the motion does not stand, uh, therefore uh, is not voted upon, is, is considered defeated. Uh, as Chair Martin, I know that uh, your heart is in the right place and you and I have had some discussion on this. And uh, I guess all of us give in certain ways. I know there's many people on council that uh, belong to uh, help out with 4-H. Uh, there's people that uh, on council that uh, help young girls and organizations. Uh, there's councillors uh, that uh, belong to uh, service clubs in Southwest Middlesex and uh, and uh, they donate in that way. And there's others that give financial donations to the various organizations. But uh, we, I, as I said in a previous email to you, I know your heart's in the right place, but uh, we will abide by the uh, policies of council and uh, that motion is defeated. We'll move on. Thank you, Martin. Uh, correspondence uh, and petitions. Uh, there is uh, a tile loan application. Uh, Kristen, is this in your field or will this go uh, back to Public Works or Jill? Jill, if you could give me some direction on that, number eight, uh, who wishes to speak to this subject? It's pretty straightforward, Mayor Mayhew. I'll just move it. All yeah. right, thank you. Sorry, it took me a moment so to unmute myself. Yep. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that the tile loan application is approved in the amount of 73,000. All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Motion is carried. And um, so if I could just yes, point out, we've lost, we have lost Councillor Cowell. Um, so I'll see if she can get back on, although we are drawing towards the end of the meeting, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jill, for that uh, notification. Unfinished business number nine on the agenda council. Uh, there has been nothing uh, recorded on the agenda. Item number 10 on the agenda is new business. Uh, the two items that were removed have been dealt with. There are no addendum items or other business. County Council uh, Conference and Updates. Uh, the County- uh, I think Ian had a comment. Yes. Oh, yes, uh, Ian. Oh, 
Sorry, I don't know if this is appropriate time. Yeah. I just had a question or two. Is yes, go ahead. Okay. And who uh, are you addressing the question, question to? Is, oh, sorry. Who are you there. addressing the question to, Ian? Yeah, go ahead, Ian. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the one question, uh, the tender closed uh, a little bit ago for the economic development officer. I'm wondering if uh, what happened there, if it continued through, uh, even though we have the COVID problem or just the status of that? Uh, we uh, we generally save those questions for announcements. Uh, oh, Ian, sorry. I'm in the wrong can, you, spot. can you just wait to number 12 on the agenda and then sure. we'll address that, okay? No conference updates. We know that. County Council, uh, I'm very pleased that, uh, and uh, uh, perhaps Jill can uh, expand on this, but I'm very pleased that the county has uh, brought all the CAOs uh, together to uh, discuss the uh, COVID-19 uh, environment. Uh, many thanks to uh, the county CAO, Bill Rayburn. Uh, he has uh, put the uh, mechanics in place uh, for uh, virtual meetings of the CAOs. And uh, that has uh, given a great uh, 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 binding throughout the whole county on the actions of the various municipalities, uh, knowing that they're in sync with each other and uh, the ideas are being shared. <coughs> Bill, would you like to expand on that? Sure, yeah, we uh, meet regularly um, about once a week. Initially, it was once uh, every couple of days just to check in and see how everyone was doing and how they were dealing with Things. And um, there's a lot of great sharing and resources and information being discussed. Um, everybody comes at it with uh, different perspectives. So it's a great opportunity to make sure that our network is sharing relevant information and um, maintaining connected. And it is really handy to know what everybody is uh, going to be proposing and recommending to their own councils um, so that we're working in tandem together. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. And I know all the mayors associated with the county council are very pleased uh, you are meeting and glad it's coming. Councillor McGill, I see your hand up. A question? I just wondered if there's any progress on our county <clears throat> intersections. I was to Watford today and every time I go through that corner of uh, Dundonald and Navu Road, I notice how there's three, three flashing red lights when you're coming up to the stop sign. And then the other way, there's a flashing yellow light. And I remember years ago, there used to be a lot of bad accidents at that corner. And then they put in all those lights and the accidents all seem to stop. So I'm just wondering if we have any progress on our, on our county intersections yet. If I could uh, speak to that, uh, there's been uh, several communications I've made to uh, the engineer, uh, Chris Traney on that and uh, the uh, item of lights I think has been mentioned in every one of those. Uh, I have uh, copied Jill on all those. Uh, Council will recall, uh, I may have said that improvements are imminent on that intersection. And I made those comments quite a long time ago. Uh, it's uh, on my radar to touch base with him uh, this week. Uh, and uh, I'll ask, ask him to redefine the word imminent. Uh, because not much has been done. I haven't had the pleasure of driving through that intersection. I understand that there may have been some more aggressive uh, rumble strips cut on that. I'm not sure if any counselor has driven through that intersection, but the intensity and the, the decibel level of those were to increase. That was one of his recommendations that he did uh, say that he was gonna commence immediately. Uh, I can't verify whether that has been done before, but. Uh, I will give a report uh, at the next council meeting or uh, send a, an email off to you, but uh, it's not forgetting, forgotten. Yeah. Councillor Schuldice, did I see your hand up? No. No. Okay, Councillor Cal, I saw a thumbs up, I think, not a hand up, right? I went um, down. I didn't have any internet. I just booted from the meeting. So yeah, okay. I was thumbs up because I was back in. Yep, good, good, okay. Thank you, it's good to have you back. Uh, Mark, I'll uh, follow that up. Uh, the uh, subject conversation being COVID-19 has dominated the agenda along with uh, property matters and things of that nature, but uh, we will not lose sight of that. Uh, 
Jill and I also had discussions with uh, a private property uh, owner on signage in that area. And uh, we'll have to pursue uh, uh, that as well. Uh, we had a commitment out of him uh, to do some restorative work on uh, uh, the signboards there. And uh, we will follow that up as well because uh, I have uh, not seen anything uh, commence since that last conversation that uh, Jill and I had with the individual. And if, if I could, Mayor, I think he yes. has made improvements to the signage already. Has he? Good, that's good. I haven't been through there for a while. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Jill. Uh, Councillor Scholdice, go ahead. Thank you, go Mayor ahead, Mayor. Uh, Just, Councillor Scholdice. Thank you, Mayor Mayhew, can, can you hear me? I can. Okay, thanks. Um, I just wondered if there's been any discussion on removing the trees along Glendon Drive to improve the sight line at that intersection. Uh, I can answer that. Uh, I uh, uh, personally took photographs of uh, both uh, um, eastbound and westbound traffic, uh, Councillor Scholdice on that, uh, and actually uh, the, the north and southbound uh, ways as well. I sent uh, probably uh, 20 photographs uh, to the engineer uh, from various distances uh, from the intersection. And uh, he assured me that there would be vegetation uh, cleaning in there uh, following the receipt of those uh, photographs. He said that he would put a crew on that. I think the question is, uh, when will this happen is the, what the, the questions we have to direct to him now. But uh, I appreciate that question. And I can assure you that he has material in his hand that uh, visually informs him that there is uh, some challenges there. Thank you. Yes, Martin, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, yeah, I was through that area yesterday and they have cleaned the Kragenbike and the ditch. So that improved the visual uh, aspect of that intersection coming from Melbourne towards Scott Roy. So there was an improvement there already. Okay, thank you. Yep. I've been kind of housebound here quite a bit. So anyway, that's good to know. Uh, Council, we are still in uh, announcements and concerns. Uh, any other expressions of interest uh, you would like to bring to the floor? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to item number 13 of the agenda, closed session. There are none scheduled. Bylaws Council, there are four bylaws. Uh, I think there was, a, there was a couple of questions, I think. Thank oh, you. Oh, did I miss it? Okay, I missed those hands. Put them up high, guys. Yes, thank you. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Vink, followed by Councillor Crothers. Yes, uh, I just wonder what the status is of the daycare center. Uh, is that a situation where we haven't got a building permit and we can't do anything, or what is the status? There are talks. Uh, in progress, Martin, and uh, I will hand that conversation over to Jill and she can explain it amply. Thank sure. you, Jill, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so yes, we continue to meet with the architect um, and uh, part of the work right now is more around the design of the building, which then actually has to be approved by the Ministry of Education as they have responsibility under legislation for approving any design of childcare spaces. There's specific design criteria that they need to adhere to. Um, so that's why this type of building needs to go in there for approval before we could even um, submit it for a building permit and through our own process. Um, additionally, we're working on the site plan. So we've been continuing to work with the architect who has um, their own uh, suite of different resources as well that are helping out, including um, engineering works. And so their engineering has been doing um, studies and research, uh, working with both Greg um, through in our public works, as well as with the county. So we've had uh, many discussions and have been meeting sort of on a bi-weekly basis every two weeks um, to continue on with that, as well as with the um, ELM staff and a member of their board to make sure that they're, they're the ones who are going to know what works best for them and their, um, their charges. So um, they've been great to work with and uh, we're really excited about what we're seeing and how it's coming together there might be definitely a point at which we are going to just have to stop the progress because we won't be able to continue to work because we can't have people doing any more investigation. 
organizations actually out in the field. Um, that hasn't happened quite yet. Um, the other thing I would say is uh, we had hoped to have um, a quick open house meeting actually at 6.30 today um, before the council meeting to do a little show of what the design would look like, but obviously that had to get canceled. So we're thinking of maybe another opportunity in May for some type of virtual presentation or just a slideshow that we can post to show the public how this is coming together. So that's, we're at the daycare, we're still working at it, um, uh, but we're, we're not going to be able to continue necessarily all the way through. Um, until some of the things change with emergency orders. Uh, additionally, I reached out to Cindy Howard, who works with the county and who helped to facilitate us getting this um, grant through the city of London from the province. And um, we did have a date that we were obligated to meet, um, which we won't be able to really meet anymore, um, given everything that's changed. So. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that they understand that and she has reached out to them. I haven't got anything back in writing from the city. However, um, I think we've got verbal confirmation that they understand that a January 1 target of for 2021 is probably not when the facility is going to be able to be open. I don't know if Steve has anything further he'd like to add. I can yes, uh, go ahead, Steve, if you're with us. Um, yeah, no, Jill covered everything off there. I, I don't really have anything else to add to the, besides what she said. Okay, thank you very much. Council, I do see some hands up and I'll take them in the order that they were raised. Uh, Councillor Crothers, go ahead. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I guess one question more, uh, just for information. Is there any thoughts of solar panels on this building similar to the uh, uh, town hall and various other municipal buildings. Thank you, uh, Ian. Uh, Jill, uh, in your uh, uh, discussions with the engineer, uh, has that been brought up or may perhaps may it be brought up? Go ahead, Jill. Yep. So um, I think the municipality at the time, and Steve can correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but I, what I would expect is that the municipality took advantage of a number of um, available incentives that the province had at the time in putting solar panels out. I think with some of the changes to the Green Energy Act, I'm not sure those same um, programs are currently available. So it isn't something we've looked into specifically. Um, Steve, you can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but I, I would expect that given the timing of those panels being on a number of the facilities, it was, it was because it was a really lucrative venture. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve, and thank you, Jill. Uh, thank you for your question, Ian. I knew that was a lucrative opportunity at the time and uh, has since gone by. Uh, Councillor McGill, I saw your hand up there. Thank you for your patience. I just wondered if the entrance is going to be allowed onto Dundonald. I'm, I'm hoping it will be. I know the county was thinking maybe they wanted us to open up the side street and also um, do you know yet if the old water tower footing is going to have to be removed or can that be left in place? Okay. That information has not been conveyed. Has it been part of the discussions, Jill, with the uh, engineer? Go ahead. It, it was. So the county engineer, um, through discussions of reviewing the plan, um, initially had some reservations about the location of the entrance. But then when we gave the full measures, um, he withdrew his concern. So we're fine on that front. Um, and Steve, maybe I would refer back to you on the footings, um, just because I um, don't want to misspeak. I, I know we've done a lot of investigations on what's going to be required. Um, and I'll turn it over to you if that's okay. Um, certainly through, through you, the mayor. Could you repeat the portion, the question about the footings? What was the particular question? Ian, if you could express your concern about the footings to Steve. Well, it was me. I just well, wanted to. Uh, Martin. And it's, a, Martin. it's just a, it's a small, it's a small thing, but, or well, maybe not really a small thing, but I just wondered if you knew, if, if you knew yet whether the water tower footing would have to come out. Uh, through you, Mayor Mayhew, uh, based on all of the uh, the test holes that were dug, 
uh, there were no concerns. And based on the depth, I don't have it right in front of me, but whatever the depth of the, the pad was going to be in the footings uh, compared to what the digs um, found and what the records dictate as to how far they did clear uh, the previous structure, there doesn't seem to be any concern or need at this point. It's unlikely that they would have to remove anything else. Uh, thank you, uh, Stephen. Uh, Councillor Crothers, one more question. Uh, yes, just a statement. Uh, my information from a good source is the footings are down eight feet and they will be a mass footing, probably two, three, four feet thick. Uh, yeah, if uh, any engineer suggested that I had to be removed, uh, I'd really like to have a speak to that engineer. Thank you. Okay, great. Yes, uh, Councillor Schuldice, I see your hand. Thank you, Mayor May. Here, I just wondered if this design layout and plan will be coming before council before it's presented to the public. Yes, thank you very much for the question. Uh, Jill, what is the process of uh, council's involvement in this? So the idea uh, around the plan would be that it provides another opportunity for um, the public to have a look at it and gather any feedback and input we have before something is finalized. Um, the building, and certainly we can bring the um, plan before council if that, uh, before the public session, if that's what council would like, happy to do that. Um, whether or not that's just something you, uh, I could share with you, happy to do that ahead of time, or we can do it through a formal council meeting. Um, the that's fine. Um, and in the end, the, the plan is that you will have a site plan as well that council has to approve. So that has to go before council also. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Schuldice, and thank you, Jill. Uh, we will, uh, the, the uh, discussions will continue with ELM and uh, our administration and our engineers. And at the appropriate time, uh, we'll make sure that uh, it is, uh, well communicated to everyone and that uh, we receive input from our uh, uh, Southwest Middlesex communities. And uh, council will certainly uh, be advantaged by uh, having discussion on it as well. Council, we're still on number 12. Are there any other concerns or announcements that uh, you're running out of questions there, Council Crothers, one more and that's it, okay? I'm just going back to one I asked before at the wrong time about the uh, economic development officer, if that's been finalized or where we're at, it closed back in, uh, I forget, just a bit ago. I, yes, uh, Jill was working on that the other day. Jill, I'll let you answer uh, Councillor Crothers' question. Uh, absolutely, and this is something we've uh, given a lot of thought to and uh, I've had conversations with the mayor about as well. Um, I think we're all sensitive to the fact that this is a really different situation that we're in and um, hiring staff uh, at this point is something we need to consider. <coughs> um, we are following the plan that council approved that that said we, we acknowledge we're in a different time. Uh, I think one of the reasons that I'm moving forward with this particular um, proposal to have a staff member, and we have done some interviewing, we have not yet made an offer, but um, to finalize something in the near future. Um, the, uh, the thing that we're going to be really all dealing with um, moving forward as we you know, move away from some of these restrictions is how are we going to recover as uh, an economy? both locally, regionally, provincially, nationally, internationally. So I, I can't think of anything more important than us being involved in economic development at this point. Um, communications is a big part of what we're all trying to work on right now as well, as we're trying to communicate out the public within our staff and um, amongst council members as well. So I think this position is one that uh, this particular pandemic is demonstrating that we critically need within the municipality. I know that a new committee has been struck at the county and perhaps the mayor would like to speak to that, but there um, specifically a new committee that is going to be looking at um, the economic recovery and what <laughs> the um, and as that task force 
it, it's already had a couple of meetings and I, I think we need to be part of that as well in making sure that we're connected and in partnership with everything that the county is working on on this front. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Jill uh, made reference to the county's initiatives on that, and I have been following that. Kara Finn is, uh, of course, in charge of that as economic development officer. Uh, much of the program uh, is based on low interest loans available to uh, independent merchants. I have expressed that I would like to see the mandate go farther than that. Uh, I mentioned uh, that uh, some of the business environments uh, are in need of work as well. And it's not just a case of uh, handing out low interest money. I, I would like to see the mandate go farther than that. And uh, I continue to uh, bring that to, to people's attention. And Jill is right. Uh, we, uh, we have an economic strategy. Uh, we're very fortunate to have that because that will give us direction. And uh, we must not take our eye off that document and uh, uh, put it into practice. What has uh, been put down in words uh, is our challenge. And uh, we hope to be uh, advancing that cause uh, for others, uh, uh, as we speak. We, uh, we want to continue that or not lose focus on that. Quite understandable. Last, yeah, last call for uh, uh, comments or concerns. Seeing none, uh, we realize there's no closed session. Number four bylaws. There are four bylaws and the uh, confirming bylaw. Uh, Krista, is that a motion to uh, uh, move uh, the bylaws be accepted as presented? The four bylaws, if we could do those first, and seconded by uh, Councillor Mark McGill. Any discussion, Council? All in favor, please uh, raise your hand. All opposed? Carry. And the confirming bylaw council, uh, may someone uh, entertain a motion to uh, move uh, that this uh, virtual meeting happened? I'll Thank move. you very much, Councillor Crothers, seconded by Councillor Bartlett. Discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Council number 15 on your agenda, a notice of future meetings. Uh, we meet May 13th at 7 p.m. And we meet May 27th at 7 p.m. <coughs> and Jill, it's probably a safe bet that they will be virtual meetings probably, eh? Who knows, eh? I think so. Yeah, time will tell. Thank you very much, uh, staff, uh, for joining us uh, this evening. Council, thank you very much for your patience. I have a small computer screen, and it is hard to see uh, uh, nine or ten people on it and uh, uh, read their body language. But we got through it in good time. Uh, thank you again uh, for your uh, dedication. I move that this meeting be adjourned at 8.18. Thanks, Alan. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mike. We'll see you. Thank you. Good night, Thanks, everyone. Good night, everybody. Martin.